verses 1 through 13. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over that wall of the sheepfold rather than go through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and lead them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they will follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, they will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep, all who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come before me will be saved. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will, they will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thieves' purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they do not, because they do not belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for money and doesn't really care about the sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, Amen. Um, I'm going to have to excuse you. My voice is scratchy. You can hear me fine now? As I took on the sermon, I'm not sure I completely understood how much I would learn just by trying to write it. It's funny how sometimes you think you already know something, but in reality, you really don't get it at all, or at least as much as you thought you did. And I just want to let you guys know that even though you might already know the factual information or the biblical connections I make to those facts, try putting them together and I'm certain you will get the full message Christ is trying to give you today on this wonderful Sunday. Yet another gift from, from God to add to our extensive list. The analogy of us as humans to sheep is an old and some people think outdated example, but it is quite possibly the most accurate analogy used in the Bible. For example, each shepherd cuts notches into the ears of his sheep to show everyone ownership. It is painful for both sides, but it puts a permanent mark that nothing can take away. Sometimes we ourselves are brought to Christ through tragedy or a painful learning experience. The pain or lesson learned is a special bond, and once we accept Christ, He is never going away. He possesses ownership of us, very similar to a shepherd with his sheep. Some of you are wondering, what is our ear notch, or symbol that Christ owns us? Well, God has made it very clear on several occasions that our actions and the way we treat other people is a sure sign of Christ. And a perfect scripture to go with this would be Numbers 18, verse 19. This is an eternal and unbreakable bond between the Lord and you, and it also applies to your descendants. Sheep are creatures of habit. If left to make their own decisions, they will lead themselves to their own demise. They will follow the same trails until they walk themselves into enormous ruts. But let me spread a little clarity on what that means to us as God's children. Humans even children of God leave themselves in the same boring or even reckless path until God throws something in their way to snap them back into reality. If he didn't, we would lead ourselves to troubling habits or even lead ourselves away from Christ, and eventually to an ultimate death of the soul. Thank God for his compassion and patience for putting up with our stupidity and wandering away from the one who protects us. Of course, if you look back to the word, as we always should, then Proverbs 2, verse 8 would convey this idea clearly as well. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. However, with all of this being said, one cannot have it both ways. We either belong to the Lord or we do not. Jesus himself warned us that there would come a day when many would say, Lord, in your name we did many wonderful things. But he, he also pointed out how we, how we rejected being his, yet we want it to be ours when it is on our time. I'm not saying it to try to frighten anybody, but don't you think it is unfair and a little thankless that anyone can claim complete responsibility?
responsibility for some of our own successes, or deny we are his, and there are several ways we can do that. <coughs> we can deny him our time by saying, oh, I don't feel like, I don't feel like doing it right now. We can verbally deny him, or even not act as a Christian should act. By this I mean sometimes subconsciously we know there is some good, some good deed we are capable of doing, and we don't do it because we are being lazy. God has God been lazy to us? We are moving on, not because I want you to forget that key part of what I said, but because we aren't here to get broken down. We are here to hear the joy of the Lord. The base for my entire message today is that we need to trust God, who has proven to be the good shepherd, and trust that our path is protected because he loves us. Um, for me, in the future, is going to be I'm going to college, so I have to trust that he is going to help me lead the right path through all that, which is four to, I don't know, seven years, depending on how you do it. Uh, four, four paid four years. Um, but uh, a more extensive example is um, why I'm here today, because uh, the summer before my junior year, uh, I moved in with my dad and stepmother, y'all know them, Dennis and Leanne Cox, um, for my from my mom, see who I've lived with my, my whole life. I'm not really sure either of them realize how crazy painful that was to leave my mom and to try to settle into a new life because it really, it really is, it's difficult, like mentally, emotionally, it really gets to you. Um, but I want, I want to thank both sides of that for cooperating and I know that's been tough. I know it's been tough. And I know it's tough to see me go through stuff like that too. And I want to thank y'all for being there for me. If you think of how, about how much you love, how much God loves us, we are too valuable for him to lose. And my closing statement is that we all have free will, as does a sheep. But trust is staying close to our protector. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for bringing everybody here today to hear your word. Thank you for making me able, although my voice is a little less capable than I'd like. Um, and just, just that it really hasn't gone wrong, and um, that I find comfort in you.